I think the American left and the American right are both very lost to different degrees and for different reasons. But ultimately, brain worms, mind virus, whatever you want to call it, the circuit is shorted out, does not compute. So the left in their bubble, not unlike the right wing bubble, missed some very major warning signs, not an absolute statement. It's not as if the left did not identify some of the red flags and did have some level of focus on these red flags. They've certainly not been afraid to critique the Democratic Party, unlike right wing media who operates like a monolith, like an extension of the Republican Party. Here and there, occasionally giving very soft critique of the Republican parties. But in essence, if I were a Republican senator, House member, across the spectrum from the most extreme to the most moderate, I can't imagine many people in the Republican Party that would have any problem with right-wing media across the board, whether it's Tim Pool, Ben Shapiro, Stephen Crowder, Fox News, Newsmax. I can't imagine I would have any problem with them. In fact, across the board, with very few exceptions, I would be very appreciative of the right-wing media. In contrast, if I were a Democrat, most Democrats, I would have a lot of problems with left-wing media, for sure, because they don't casually call out the Democratic Party, they aggressively do so. So that means, in essence, right-wing media is the most establishment part of our media. They support the establishment. They are in line with the elites in the Republican Party across the board. In contrast, the Democrats are afraid of left-wing media because left-wing media aggressively calls them out. So I'm not saying that they haven't identified any red flags and haven't spoken out about certain issues. What I am saying is they definitely did not get the severity of certain issues and therefore did not speak aggressively enough about certain things, which allowed us to get to the point where we are. Now, I'm not putting the blame on left-wing media for the failure of the Democratic Party, but they did contribute to the failure of the Democratic Party, for sure. In spite of them calling out the Democratic Party, they certainly missed the mark, especially people like Brian Tyler Cohen. But right now, what we're seeing is a continuation of the obliviousness and the naivete. So a lot of left-wing channels are starting to make videos about how MAGA is regretting their vote already. They got this video of this woman who talks about her family being split apart, and she's in tears, literally. And there's some other people that posted things about their family being split apart. Someone got served with divorce papers. So they're putting this content out to their viewers. What's the effect of this? Well, this is yet another example of how left-wing media contributes to the kind of disaster that we just saw in the election. Because by focusing on this kind of nonsense. The effect is that their viewers have this perception that there is going to become a point where the people who voted for Trump are going to wake up and realize they made a very big mistake. Now, when you add that idea into their mindset, here's one of the dangers. Four years from now, there's another election. And the way people weigh their sense of urgency in terms of the need to vote, it's not a black and white thing. There's a lot of things that they factor in. Every voter factors in many things when they come up with a level of urgency to, to vote. When you muddy the waters and add the idea that there's this meaningful amount of regret from Trump voters, that takes away from the urgency to vote, right? Let me illustrate. Let's keep all factors the same for a potential Democratic Party voter. We're going to only change one detail. One person believes that a ton of Trump supporters are just absolutely in shock and regret over the last four years. So this is four years from now, 28. One person has the idea that there's a big regret, significant levels of regret. The other person doesn't have this idea. Who do you think is going to have a more sense of urgency to go out and vote to stop the next insane Republican trying to mirror Donald Trump's success? The one who, in all of the elements that they're using to decide the sense of urgency, part of it is, well, a lot of these Trump voters effed around and found out. I mean, if you really believe that, then you're going to believe that many of them are not going to turn out. Some of them might actually even vote for the Democratic candidate, right? That is less urgent scenario than the scenario where you have the feeling that a significant portion of Trump voters do not feel regret. And in fact, they felt that the last four years, right? Again, this is 28 we're talking about. Last four years, they feel like it was great. The economy was great. The jobs were great. You know, Trump delivered. He deported all, all those whatever right? Completely dismissing all the noise from liberal media. And much of that noise doesn't even pierce their, pierce their bubble. Do you remember how people like Brian Tyler Cohen love to do videos talking about Donald Trump's crowd size? People are leaving. They're leaving early. Look at how many people are showing up at Kamala's events. Look at how many people are showing up at Trump's events. Look at all these empty seats. So if you are being bombarded on a daily basis from videos from Brian Tyler Cohen showing you how people aren't even showing up to Trump events. Now, keep in mind, the kind of people who show up at Trump events are the most hardcore MAGA people, right? If even those people have such a, a depression, you know, they're not motivated at all, not even motivated to go listen to Donald Trump, what does that say for the Republican voters overall? I mean, I think a lot of people watching those videos from Brian Tyler Cohen would be led to believe that 
Donald Trump getting elected is not that serious of a threat, right? How can the minority party with such an unpopular candidate where even the cult members, the most ardent supporters are not motivated to show up at these rallies? How can that person win against Kamala Harris, right? Who is much younger, she's able to communicate, she's talking about all these economic policies, right? Getting all this support from all these major celebrities and then all these missteps about the Puerto Rico comment and, and whatever else. And then you got these mega Latino people, whatever. If you're seeing that, and then Brian Tyler Cohen is showing you these empty rallies, how urgent do you think you feel the need to actually go and vote to stop this guy? So, I mean, logically, do you think a lot of people watching Brian Tyler Cohen would be like, oh my goodness, I gotta go vote, right? Trump's gonna win. Or are they thinking, that guy ain't gonna win. Look at him, he's crazy. Right? People can see he's great. Look what he's doing, look at the stuff he's saying. And nobody's even showing up for his own rallies. He's not gonna win. What percentage of Brian Tyler Cohen voters had that kind of mentality. And if you're a Brian Tyler Cohen fan and you were thinking like that, please comment below. And I'm not gonna hardly get anybody at all, but it'd be interesting to see if I do. That's what they were doing before they lost the election so poorly. And now right after that, they're doing the same kind of thing. Let's make a bunch of videos talking about how MAGA's, they found out, they're regretting it. They're regretting it, they finally get it. So that means next election, I don't need to vote because certainly, right? If right away they were getting the message and then after four years of chaos again, you know, they're certainly gonna be like, oh my goodness. And then of course, Brian Tyler Cohen and Midas touching, all these people are gonna be parading a whole bunch of disillusioned Trump voters. Man, oh, and this, and then are we gonna have again the same scenario where you have just enough people that watch this and don't think that it's that level of a threat because how can this guy win, right? Look at what we just experienced last four years. Look at all these people that Brian Tyler Cohen keeps showing me every day that are saying, oh, goodness, I'm a right winger, I'm a Republican, and I'm in shock, right? Clearly, this is gonna massively hurt the Republican Party. So they're not gonna win again in 28. We're on the same path that led us to the failure from the last election. They still don't get it. Here's the reality. The people who are regretting their vote are outliers and they will continue to be outliers for the next four years. Trump would have to go really extreme. I mean, the day he's lining up a bunch of prominent Democrats in front of a literal shooting squad and uh, taking them out on live TV, you cross that kind of barrier, then you're gonna get to the point of significant uh, regret in terms of a, a significant portion of Trump voters having regret, even though MAGA at that point will still be pretty strong. Right-wing media will easily justify what's happening in some way. MAGA will easily justify what's happening in some way. It's essentially, MAGA is a cult. So they're as reachable as any cult, right? How easy it is to get somebody out of a cult? It's not easy, right? How many times do you see a significant part of a cult just based on events, you know, get shocked out of the cult, right? I mean, you'll have cults where the cult leader will assault, you know, children, you know, for years and the cult's still running strong, right? Somehow the cult members justify it. Somehow they make it work. So MAGA is going to be MAGA. But the rest of the people who are not MAGA but Trump voters, they are reachable, but Trump has to get to the you know, extreme levels of cartoonish in terms of how extreme he gets, which is not on, which is not likely. Now, he's probably going to do a lot of destruction, a lot of very bad things. He's going to hurt this country for decades to come. But none of it is going to be so black and white as the firing squad with top Democrats. And you have to get to those type of levels before you're going to have that moment of F around and find out. So the stuff that Humanist Report is talking about, I think maybe Kyle Kalinske did one. I think David Pakman did a video like this. Those people that are regretting their Trump vote, Listen, man, you can waste your time focusing on these outliers or you can stay focused on the price, addressing what led you to this situation in the first place, right? Having some kind of examining of how you might have contributed to this outcome, focusing on what could you have done that you didn't do that could have pushed the Democrats to do more, which would have given them more credibility. And therefore, Kamala's message about the economy would have had more effect on the voters. I think a key moment for you to examine is what was your perspective of the Build Back Better fiasco. Did you inform your voters about how it was so theatrical with Joe Manchin giving a letter in private to Democratic leaders with his demands and his constraints in terms of the amount of money that he would be okay with? Did you talk to them about that, about how he did that? And then the Democrats pretended like they didn't know what he wanted and that he was being ambiguous. And, and then they go back and forth pretending to negotiate and somehow they end up right at the number that Joe Manchin said from the get-go. But did you inform your audience from the beginning of that? Did your audience know that this was fake? That they knew what his number was? They knew what his demands were? That it was in writing? That the whole negotiating and bring it down, that was all theatrics? Or were you an accomplice to that scam, which was a major turning point that led us to where we are now? Go back in time, imagine that the Bill Black Better bill had passed anywhere close to its largest iteration. Imagine how many lives could have been helped by that bill. Imagine the credibility that the party would have as a result 
with their base. Then consider how these voters would react to Kamala's message about the economy after seeing them fight tooth and nails, whatever the expression is, to pass that bill, get it passed, help so many people. And now people come out to the polls voting for, we want more of that. Did you champion the successes of the Democratic Party in a way that led people to believe that they were doing better than they actually were? Did you parrot the narrative that Joe Biden was historically progressive, as if that had any meaning whatsoever when the bar is so low? Right-wing media is not gonna have a day of reckoning. They're gonna continue to do what they do. The most profitable thing for them to do is to continue to pander to MAGA. MAGA is the most profitable audience you can have. They're the most engaged. These guys are a cult. So from a business perspective, pandering to them is the way to go. And that's what they're gonna do, right? Because you see right-wing media, they're focused more on the money than you guys are in the left-wing media, right? All the ad reads and, you know, it's just so much more capitalist. It certainly is on the left as well, but not to that level. Unless you're Jimmy Dore, of course. There's not going to be a day of reckoning for them. But will they be for you? This is the Debate Me channel. Debate me in the comment section below. Click on the like button, subscribe. Smash that bell. Be well. Keep your eyes on the prize. Don't get distracted with nonsense. Some lady crying in some TikTok video who, for all I know, is not even a Trump voter. And wouldn't you have egg on your face if that, that comes out and right-wing media can, again, get even more credibility for, again, showing that it's you guys that are giving the misinformation. Right, so we don't even know if she's legit. But even if she is, she in no way represents the majority of MAGA and she never will. And MAGA controls the party. They control the narrative. So as long as that is the case, people like her are gonna be outliers. But you can choose to focus on them and be just like a Ben Shapiro who chooses to focus on the left people who want to abolish the police rather than focusing on the majority of the folks on the left and what they want. Maybe you're doing it because it's the most profitable. It's what your audience wants to see. It's gonna get you engagement, clicks and views. And if that's your priority versus saving democracy, I guess go nuts.